Hey guys, Pastor Gray from Forward Church in Amory, Mississippi, and I just wanted to personally thank you for tuning in to this service. And I want to also give you a personal invitation to come and be with us in uh, one of our Sunday services. Our Sunday service times are 9.30 and 11 a.m. And we'd love to see you here at Forward Church. Man, good to see you today on this Thanksgiving week. How many is ready for some turkey? I think turkey's kind of losing its pizzazz, ain't it? Somebody said, what do y'all want for Thanksgiving dinner? And I said, ribeye? Ribeye is the new turkey, I think. I'll take it any day. But so good to see you today. I'm excited about uh, today we're going to finish up. Uh, so this is Smashing Pumpkins Part 5, the last one of it. Next week, we're going to start a brand new thing. We're going to start a series for the whole month of December called Manger Things. Manger Things. So some of you's like, oh, I see where you're coming from. But anyway, today we're going again, of course, to Romans chapter 12. That's been our verse for the whole thing. So I'm going to pray while you turn there. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Father, thank you so much, Lord. I thank you for your presence in this place. I thank you, Lord, for your word. For, Lord, your word is powerful. Your word is life-changing. So today, Lord, as we get into your word, I pray that it would do what you said it would do, Lord, that it would change our life, that it would transform our mind, Lord, that it would just give us a brand new perspective of the way we need to see things. Lord, help us to, to not see with a carnal eye, but let us see with a spiritual eye, Lord. Let us hear with our spiritual ears today, Lord, that we might hear your word and receive it, God, and that it would change our lives. Lord, thank you for your word. And, Lord, I pray right now over everyone that's on our prayer list. Lord, you know all those that are sick today. We ask you to touch them and, Lord, just heal their bodies. Lord, we are a, a, a body of believers right here at this church that totally and firmly believes in your healing power. And so, Lord, today we come together in agreement for those that are sick, and we ask you to touch them today. And, Lord, the ones that are hurting, touch them today. Heal them in Jesus' name. And uh, my wife, uh, I love it. You don't have to do this, but I love it. Uh, Ann called yesterday and told Tracy, or texted her one, said that uh, uh, she was under the weather and wasn't going to be here today. You don't have to tell me you're not going to be here, but I appreciate that. Uh, but uh, anyway, Tracy said, okay, well, he'll give you a shout-out. I don't normally do that either, but hey, Ann. <laughs> so she said she'd be watching since she can't be here. But anyway, hey, Smashing Pumpkins Part 5 uh, says this, Romans 12, 2. It says, do not conform to the patterns of this world. I, I, you know, I'm telling you something. I love this verse. Somebody, I don't even remember who it was, said that they've read this verse every day this whole month. I believe if you read that verse every day for a month, it will absolutely transform your mind. Amen. How many knows it ain't about how much you read in your Bible. It's about what you get out of what you read. Amen. I used to think if I didn't read 10 chapters a day, I was backslidden. Now I realize that I could read 10 chapters and walk away and couldn't tell you anything I read. So if you'll just chew a little bit of it, and chew it and, and, and swallow it and get the nourishment out of it, that'll be better for you than reading 10 chapters. Amen? So how many knows we got a lifetime to read it? All right, I ain't preaching on that today, but I could. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. Now, if you read that in the, in the Greek, it, it means uh, uh, the word pattern there means one's mind and character to another's pattern. In other words, don't, don't set your mind and your character on what someone else tries to tell you or what. Uh, uh, I, here's the deal. If, if your mindset is based on CNN or Fox, friend, you're in trouble. If your mindset is what you get off of Yahoo News or Facebook News, you're in trouble. If your mindset is what you get out of late night talk shows, friend, you are in trouble. Amen. The Bible says do not conform to the patterns. Don't let your mind or your character be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able, 
then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So this whole series has been about changing our mindset or the way we think or how we see things. You know, like I said, too many times we set our mind on what we hear on TV or see on TV or even just in our own culture. We, our mind tends to transform. I, I can prove it to you. I've seen so many people that has a great foundation in them, but they move off to maybe where culture is not what we have around here, and they begin to conform to that culture, whether it be right or wrong. Amen. Y'all have seen it. And they begin to change the way they think, the way they do things, the way they see things to the culture that they're living in. The Bible's telling us to stand firm on the culture, the foundation that he's put in us from a young age. That's why it's so important to get a foundation in your children at a young age. Amen? Get that foundation in them so when they go off to college, I'm going to tell you something. I've seen a lot of smart people not come back from college very smart. <laughs> or at least in the ways of the word anyway. Pretty smart in the ways of the world but not the word. Parents, you can thank me later for saying that. But it's the truth. So, uh, so we're going this week. We're going to look at another issue because I think the world, uh, uh, TV, TV preachers, and even comedians. It's amazing how we get our news from what late night comedians talk about, and we take that as the truth. But comedians and and TV preachers and and TV in general, not just TV preachers. Some you know somebody you may know personally has, has uh, caused our mindset on this issue to be skewed. Now, the Bible tells us in John 3, 16, y'all all know this verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son or his, his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So this week, we're going to talk about giving. Don't get all excited. We're going to talk about giving because God gave, amen, God gave, God was a giver. Jesus freely gave his life. Jesus was a giver, amen. So we're going to talk about giving, and I hope that we're going to break the negative mindset about tithes and offerings, amen. Now, all throughout Scripture, we read where God wants to bless us. How many would believe that God truly wants to bless us? Now, this is not in your notes, but 3 John 1 verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. You hear what the word said? I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Now, the, the word prosper there in the Greek, it means this. In whatever... In whatever that you may prosper. In whatever. The verse says in all things. Or in other words, in whatever. Well, what, is, what does God want me to prosper in? Whatever. In all things. In the Greek, it goes on to say that it means in material things. Friend, I'm gonna don't come telling me that God don't want you to have material things. He wants you to be blessed and prosper even in material things. Yes, he does. And the word, it says that you may prosper in, in all things. That is, a, that is in continuous tense. In other words, it wasn't meant for just that time period. It was meant continuously. Some of y'all ought to get excited right now because God's about to bless your socks off. I started to say pants, but that's inappropriate. <laughs> He's going to bless your socks off. Amen? I believe he can and I believe he will. But it, it, it goes on to say that it means that in a continuous tense suggests the successive circumstances varying prosperity as week follows week. In other words, week after week, God wants to bless you and prosper you. That's what it means if you read it in the Greek. Amen. Now, does that mean that God wants you rich? No. 
Not necessarily. It just means that he wants you to have what you need for your journey. Amen. It ain't about being rich. He wants you to have what you need for this journey called life. So not only does God want to bless us, he has a way to bless us. That's the cool thing. Amen. He has a system set in place so when we do things his way, we get his results. And that's what it's all about. Now, the Bible, uh, you know this verse, the Bible says that his ways are above our ways. His ways are higher than our ways. But too many times we try to figure things out in our own natural thinking. We try to come up with a plan and look for ways that we can get the things we need or the things we, that we desire. But God's, in God's system, the plan for blessing has already been established. Amen. All we have to do is position ourselves by following his commands. Friends, I am convinced today that God's blessings are attached to obedience. Thank you for one good amen. God's blessings are attached to obedience. When we honor his word by giving of our tithes and offerings, we are positioning ourselves under the open window of heaven that he talks about in Malachi chapter 3. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, it says, Bring all, not part, but all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord, heaven's Uh, says the Lord of heaven's army I will open the windows of heaven for you I like that amen I will pour out a blessing so great that you won't have room enough to take it in and then he says this try it put me to the test is what God says friend when you uh, uh, when you live a lifestyle of generosity giving of your time, giving of your talents, giving of your resources to bless others in his name, you are living a lifestyle of blessing. And when you live to give, not live to get, see, that's where we've got it wrong. Most of us are living to get instead of living to give. Amen? Give me, give me, give me. My name's Jimmy. But that's the way we are. I hope nobody's named Jimmy in here. But when you live to give, God will make a way. God will make sure that your needs are met according to his abundance in glory. Now, again, I know that giving is not a popular thing to talk about. I know that there's been a lot of TV preachers that have, they want your money, you know. Uh, I uh, I used to do a, a job where I'd have to go to, to people's houses and had this one lady that every time I'd go over there, she'd have a stack of envelopes, uh, things she got in the mail from TV preachers because she sent them an offering one time. She, she had me look at one one day, and it, it said that if you will send this particular TV preacher $50, that he will send you a vial of water straight from Jerusalem, that if you put that water, or you, if you, if you uh, or I think it was oil, send you some oil from olive straight from Jerusalem, and you could anoint your head with that, and you would be healed for $50. She said, what do you think about this? I said, I think you ought to give that $50 to your local church, and you'd be a lot more blessed. Amen. Friend, give your money to the local church. That's where God wants you to give your money at. Amen. Nothing wrong with helping other ministries, but come on. I see people give all their money away, and this lady did. She'd given hundreds and hundreds of dollars away to these TV preachers, and you know what she had? She was sick in her body, and she had nothing to show for it. Well, does does giving not work? I believe giving does work when you give obediently and give it under God's prescription. Okay, that's another sermon for another day. I want to tell you something. God never promised to make you rich. Never did. But he did say that he would bless you and meet your needs. Amen. Amen. Now, Philippians 4, 19, y'all know this verse. It says, uh, and my God will meet all of your needs 
all of your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Now, why did Paul say that verse? He said that because the people of Philippi were sending money and goods to him for the work of the ministry. So, yes, today we're going to look at the biblical principle of tithing and giving. Now, we only talk about this maybe, maybe twice a year, so today's your lucky day. If you're visiting with us, thank you for being here, amen. But I will say this, if, you're not, if this is not your church and you're just visiting here, we don't want your money. If you have a church, go give your money to that church, amen. If this is your church, then to be honest, we, we expect you to give and support this church. Is that okay for me to say, Pastor John, is that okay? Fellow pastor here, he's shaking his head yes. If this is your church, if this is the church you go to, if this is the church you would call on if something happened in your family, a tragedy or something, or you needed prayer, if this is the church you would go to for that, then you're expected to support it with your tithe and offerings. Is that okay? Get an amen right here if I don't get one anywhere else because he's about to go pastor. He knows. Amen. (laughs) Now, I I do realize, and I've been saying this all month because y'all knew this was coming. And and from the looks of the crowd, most folks figured it was coming today (laughs) because generally we're packed at the first service. So apparently some of them knew that, you know, this is the last Sunday in the month. It got to be today. (laughs) We may preach it again. (laughs) But I realize there's generally two types of people when it comes to a preacher talking about tithing. You got one type of person that when the preacher starts talking about tithes and offerings, it don't bother them because they know. They recognize where their blessing comes from. But then you got the other ones that when you talk about tithes and giving, it makes them kind of uncomfortable because you don't think you have to give. Well, here's the deal, friend. You don't have to give. You get to give. It's a whole different concept there. You get to. Let me ask you this. If somebody wanted to investigate whether or not you were truly sold out to Jesus and they had no other evidence but your financial records, would they conclude that you're living for Jesus or living for yourself? Ooh, I'm meddling now. You know the last thing to get saved is your pocketbook. (laughs) Just saying. And you know that pocketbook is attached to your heart. Ooh, amen or oh me. But I want to go ahead and set your mind at ease. Here's the thing. I'm not preaching about this for my gain. Because I don't care today if somebody in this room, and I'd be awesome if you were here today, if somebody in this room put a million dollars in the offering plate, that does not affect my salary. Amen. Just going to let you in on. So I'm not preaching to you about this today to help me get more money. It has nothing to do with my salary. But let me tell you what it would do. It would cause this church to be debt free. Don't you think that would be a good thing? Amen. What would that cause? That would cause this church to be able to plant other churches. That would cause this church to support more missionaries. That missionaries wouldn't have to worry about where they're going to get supplies or where they're going to get food. If they're going to have a vehicle to get up in the mountains of India or Africa or whatever, they wouldn't have to worry about that because they would know all we've got to do is call forward church because they've got, they got folks in that church that are blessed and they're giving and that church is giving to us. We would be able to start rehab centers. We'd be able to feed the hungry. All kinds of things we would be able to do. Somebody said this, and I think this is true. Somebody said that that if half the Christians, now get this, if half the Christians in the world would tithe, the world hunger problem would be solved within a couple of years. Hmm. See, when you give, you're giving to the kingdom of God. Not to a man, not even to a church, but to the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us to give a tenth, a tithe 
of your increase. Now, the word tithe in the, in the Hebrew means tenth. Somebody said, is that on the gross or the net? Look, statistically, only 3% of Christians tithe. So who cares if it's gross or net? Amen. <laughs> Most folks ain't doing it anyway. <laughs> but the Bible says to do it first, off the top. Not if you got, you know, oh, baby, we paid all the bills this week. We went out to eat. We went to a movie. We did all this. We got some money left over. Let's give our tithes. No, that's not what it's saying. It's easy to give what you have left over. It doesn't take any faith for you to give what you have left over. Amen. None at all. Amen. It says to do this before. Amen. And I've said this, I've said this a lot of times. You can live better on the blessed 90 than you could ever live on a cursed 100. Your 90 will go further than your 100 if you're giving that your 10% to God. I guarantee it will. Now you say, oh, I tried it. It didn't work for me. How many ever planted an apple seed one day and got an apple the next? We planted an apple tree when I was a kid. I was so excited. Mom and Daddy went and dug it up from somebody's house, and it was, it was about head high. Head high, not my head, but somebody's head. And we transplanted that thing in our backyard. I was so excited. I loved apples. I was excited about it. You believe it took about six years for us to get apples off of that tree? But, son, when they came in, whoo! We had apples everywhere. So just because you tried tithing and it didn't work for you, who told you to stop? Got to give that seed a little time to come up. Amen? But 22 times in Proverbs, it says first fruit. Now, Proverbs was written to, a, to an agricultural society. So at harvest time, uh, at the harvest, a, a tenth of the first harvest was given to the storehouse, which the storehouse was an Old Testament representation of the church. Now, offerings are different than tithe. Tithe is off the top. Offerings is what you give after the tithe. Amen. Just get it, get it straight. They are freely given, and they're given out of your surplus. So, in other words, you give your tithe off the top, Pay your bills. We're, this church has never said give your money even if your bills don't get paid. I believe God wants you to pay your bills because God's all about integrity. Amen. Give your tithe. Pay your bills. Go out and have you some. Carry your wife on a date. If you don't have a spouse, find a date. Just don't find them in a bar. You ever notice how Christian folks go to bars to find a date? Find you a date in church. Come on, somebody. You go fishing in a bar, you're going to catch something in a bar. Y'all get that in a minute. <laughs> it's one of those slow jokes, but you'll get it in a little bit. Pay your bills. Then you have a surplus to give an offering from. Again, don't give your bill money. You, you've heard old-time old folks will say, well, if it don't meet your need, it must be your seed. No, give your tithes, pay your bills, and then you got something left over you can give an offering. I mean, it's Christmas time. Folks are hurting. Folks are in need. Amen? Give an offering. It's going to go to help people. See, God, again, God expects you to pay your bills. I want to say this again. Because I want to be very clear. This church is not after your money. God is not after your money. We just, want to, uh, we just want you to tithe because that way you can be blessed. Amen. We just want to see you blessed. And once you're blessed, you will freely give to the needs of others. Because, again, you'll recognize where your blessing comes from. Now, Brother Greg, Brother Greg, I can't afford to give. Y'all heard that? I can't afford to pay my tithes. See, friend, you don't pay your tithes. You give your tithes. If you pay something, that's like you got a bill. You give your tithe. 
Brother Greg, I can't afford to give my tithes. Well, let's put it in perspective a little bit, okay? Pastor John, would you do me a favor and hand me those two bags on the end of the pew down? Y'all have seen this, but this is one of the best ways I know to illustrate what the tithe is. Since you came on up here, I'm going to ask you to stay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Y'all have seen this, but like I said, this is the best way I know how to illustrate it. Let's say God's economy worked off cookies. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Okay. So, John, I have, you've worked hard all week. You've worked your job. You've put in 40 hours this week. At the end of that week, what do you expect? A paycheck. That's right. You expect a paycheck. And you know what? Here's the thing. I'm going to give you 10 cookies for working all week. All I ask, now I'm representing God here. All I ask is for you to give me one cookie back. Is that fair? Sure. Give me my cookie. <laughs> sure. That's the tithe. you still got nine cookies left. That's not a bad deal, is it? You can survive on nine cookies. He gives me one cookie. This is your tithe right here. This is it. That's all it is. That is fair. Amen. And now here's the thing. Because here's God's promise to you. And it's one of our core values here. You cannot outgive God. Amen. You can't outgive God. Now, you gave me the tithe. You're, you're, you're blessed. You've been tithing. You're blessed. Your bills are paid. You're doing good. You see a need. Give me an offering. Give me two more cookies. How many cookies you got left? Seven. That's not a bad deal, is it? You got seven cookies. Now, did you have any cookies before? Or, is this, or, or, or did I give you those cookies? So you didn't, you didn't have cookies? You don't, I'm your sole source of cookies. You get what I'm saying? I'm your sole source of cookies. And you have seven left. You give your tithe. And because you gave your tithe, God's blessed you. You gave an offering. That's two more cookies. That's not a bad deal, is it? Seriously, is that a bad deal? No. Thank you, brother. Hold, hold, hold up. Hold up a minute. What did I say a while ago? You can't outgive God. Because you are faithful and obedient, I'm going to give you all these cookies in return because when you give to God, He don't just give back to you. He gives you over and above what you gave. That's how tithes and offering works, folks. Thank you, brother. That's how it works. It's that simple. Now, how many here can't do without one cookie? Just a question. Hmm. See, when it comes to tithing, God's not asking anything from us he's simply asking us to give back to him what he has placed in our hands in the first place amen all oh, the church just wants my money first of all it's not your money it's God's money amen let me ask you this what backs money gold who made the gold God <laughs> How did you earn that money? You worked for it. Who gave you the ability to work? God. It's all his. And he's simply asking you to give one cookie. A tenth. That tenth supplies the house of God to reach people for Jesus. So really, when you give, you're helping to reach people people for Jesus and then God blesses you in return and after all your bills are paid you can afford not to just give one cookie you can afford to give to others you can afford to help meet needs because God has blessed you amen now whew, let's get a breath okay I'm not as young as I used to be when you give God blesses Oh, but I know I can hear it now. I done been in this discussion. But, Brother Greg, tithing is an Old Testament law. And we're under grace. Friends, that is true and false. 
It's true and false. True, we're under grace. So no, let me just go ahead and ease your mind. If you don't tithe, that don't mean you're going to hell. Just means that you're not going to be as blessed. Okay? Tithing will not, uh, not tithing will not send you to hell, but tithing will bless you. False, tithing is not Old Testament law. Tithing was before the law was given. It is a principle in the Word of God that is tried and true from the beginning of time. So tithing is Old Testament and a New Testament principle. See, the first tithe was between Abram and Melchizedek. Uh, it happened before God had ever even given the people the law. Genesis 14, Abraham uh, had to rescue his nephew Lot. He defeated several armies in the process, and he took, when he defeated those armies in that day and time, when you defeated an army, you took all their spoils and everything. In other words, everything they had because you defeated them, you took all their gold, all their silver, all their food, all their cattle, everything that was of value, you took it because you defeated them. So once he had defeated, I got chalked it up. <laughs> you know, it's like ADD when, it, when I see chocolate. <laughs> On his way home, a man appeared to him named Melchizedek, if I'm saying that right. He was a priest and an Old Testament type of Christ. Abraham, the Bible says, Abraham bowed and worshipped him and gave him a tenth of all the spoils that he just had uh, acquired. Tithing was then outlined specifically in the law uh, that God gave his people. And it was affirmed by Jesus during his time on earth. When Jesus taught on tithing, he always challenged people to take their obedience one step further. And consider whether or not they were, they were uh, doing the right thing with the right heart. That's why the Bible says be a cheerful giver. Doing the right thing with the right heart. For example, Jesus affirms the religious leaders for tithing. But then he criticized them for neglecting their responsibility and, 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 uh, uh, to act justly and mercifully and faithfully. Uh, Matthew 23 tells the story of Matthew 23, 23. Jesus said, whoa. To you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices and mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matter of the law, which is justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should, uh, uh, you should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. Boom, bang, Mic drop, there's tithing in the New Testament for those of y'all that says tithing is not in the New Testament. Because I get that so much. Tithing's in the it's Old Testament. It's not. There it is in the New Testament. It is a New Testament principle just as sure it is, a, as it is an Old Testament principle. Amen. Jesus said you ought to be doing both. So what happens when we obey God by committing to tithing? Well, the first thing is this. We demonstrate obedience, and God's blessings are connected to obedience. God wants our obedience. John, 15, or John 14, verse 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus said, If you love me, Keep my commandments. Jesus said obeying God's commands is how you show God that you love him. God specifically promises to reward our obedience in tithing. In Malachi 3, again, God rebukes his people for neglecting the tithes. Then he gives them this challenge. Malachi 3, 10, again, I'm going to read it. It says, but... All the tithes, uh, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. Uh, if, if you do, says the Lord of heaven's army, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room to take it in. And then he says, try me. Put me to the test. You ever, you're, you, anybody in here ever gotten a fight? You don't have to raise your hand. 
Anybody in here ever been in jail? You don't have to raise your hand. Yeah, I asked that one time. Some, I said, anybody ever been in jail? And folks raised their hand, and the people next to them got nervous. <laughs> but you know, you ever been in a fight, and somebody says, you want some? Come on. Come on. Try me. That's what God's saying. He's saying, give of your tithes and offerings. Try me. Come on. See if I won't bless you. That's what the Word says. He said, put me to the test. When you're obedient with what you have, we show God that we love him and that he can trust us with more. You need more? Give more. Because then he'll give more back to you. Luke 16.10 says, uh, Whoever can be trusted with a very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. You ever seen these people that won the lottery? And in a couple of years, they're more broke than they was before they won millions of dollars. It's because they can't be trusted with a little. I've never seen a millionaire buy a lottery ticket. Think about it. Who buys the bulk of lottery tickets? Broke folks. Am I telling you the truth? I mean, even the scratch-off things you can get here in the stores. I saw a little old lady one day on a fixed income. Bought a handful of scratch-off tickets. I said, have you ever won? And she said, eh. I'm like, well, why do you do it? You know why the bulk of people that buys a lottery ticket are broke folks? Because they, they, they didn't have money to start with. So they thought, well, hey, maybe I can win some. The deal is, is if you do win some, you probably ain't going to do no good with it. And in a couple years, you're going to be more broke than you was in the first place. <sighs> whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Second thing is this, and I'm going to move on because I think somebody's mad at me in this room. <laughs> Second thing, when we commit to giving tithes and offerings is this. We get to partner with God in ministry. How amazing is that? See, God don't need your money. He owns everything and can do anything. Psalms 50 reminds us, he says that I am God, your God. In verse 9 through 12 says, listen to this. This is God speaking to us. He said, I have no need of a bull from your stall. In other words, he says, I don't need that 20 in your wallet. I, I don't need a, a goat from your pen. For every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains, and the insects in the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. Everything belongs to God already. He don't need your money. But when he commands us to bring the tithe to the local church, that way he can engage us in his work on the earth. God doesn't have to work through us, but he chooses to. And that, my friend, is a great privilege. And the third thing is this. When we commit to tithes and offerings, we put money in its place. Who knows money you know, the Bible don't, people say, well, money is the root of all evil. Well, you've just misquoted Scripture because the Bible does not say that. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. Have you seen folks? Uh, there's been murders over money. There's been divorce over money. There's been lots of stuff going on because of money, because of the love of money. But when we commit to tithes and offerings, it puts money in its place bringing the tithe is a tangible reminder that everything we have is just on loan to us from God he is our soul he is the sole provider of our cookies without him we'd have none amen 
And we all have a choice. We can put our hope in money or we can put our hope in the Lord. It's our choice. Amen. I don't know about you, but I tried, to, I tried hope in myself and in money for 26 years and it got me in a bad shape. And then thank God somebody taught me about tithing. I didn't know what that was. I'd watch my mama when we, what little we went to church as a kid. I got to hurry, don't I? What little we went to church, I'd see her drop a 20 in the offering plate. I thought that's what you did. So we go to church. Tracy and I go to church. I think I'm doing my due diligence here. I'm doing my thing. I'm dropping that 20 in the offering plate. And somebody said, so you're making $200 a week. I'm like, I make, I make good money. They said, well, why are you just putting in a 20? I'm like, well, I'm giving my tithes. Well, that's not your tithes. You're giving an offering before you even give your tithes. And so they taught me about tithing. And Tracy and I began to tithe. I, I'll be honest. I'm just going, can I be honest with y'all? I didn't like it. I'm just being honest. I did not like it. I'm like, I can deal with a 20. But you want to go drop 100 in the offering plate when I hold up. That's a steak dinner one night. And God had to show me that I was living very selfishly. And here's the thing. When we begin to give our tithes, God begin to bless us. And I'm like, oh, I get it now. I see, I see. Matthew 6, 24 says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Friends, having money is not wrong. Being wealthy does not make someone greedy. Amen. It's what you do with your money that matters. That's all that matters. When we bring the tithe to the church, we're telling God, my hope, my trust, and my security are in you and you alone. Amen. And the last thing is this. By giving our tithes and offerings, we are transformed. Matthew 6, 21, Jesus taught that uh, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Tithing is a way to allow our treasure to train our heart. Tithing is an act of the will, not a response to a feeling or an emotion. We have, and this is the truth, we have to decide to be generous before we feel generous. Because like I said, I didn't like it. <laughs> I did not like it. But I decided to go ahead and be generous before I felt like being generous. And once I became a little more generous and committed to giving my tithes and my offerings, then then and only then are we fully, God fully allows us to experience the connection between our obedience and his blessing. And then the joy of the Lord will overcome you. We were talking to some people just last night about how that uh, they were in a restaurant and they saw this elderly couple eating and they went to the to the uh waitress and said uh, I want you to give me their ticket but I don't want you to tell them I just want you to bring a paid receipt back to them and I said how'd that make you feel and they said man I just can't explain the feeling it gave me to do that so friends that's, that's what it's all about that's generosity and friend God will bless you for that amen so today if you've never stepped out in faith in the area of giving I did, you know what? I just want you to pray and ask God to show you one way that you can be a blessing to someone else. Again, the Scripture says to try him, to prove him. In other words, that means to take a step of faith and let God show you his faithfulness. Friend, when we show God our faithfulness, he'll show us his faithfulness. Amen. Proverbs 11, 24 and 25 says this. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others themselves will be refreshed. Friend, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just tell you, and like I said, I ain't here to try to make you give money. And uh, The church has money in the bank. The church is not hurting for money. That's not why I'm doing this today. I'm doing this because it's, it's getting close to Christmas. 
There's people hurting. And there's not a person sitting in this room that's not blessed. And we just want to ask you to help others. Give of your tithe and your offerings. And watch what God, God does in your life. Amen. Every head bowed. Let's pray. Lord, today I pray, God, that, Lord, if I haven't done this sermon justice and someone walks out of this room offended or with their feelings hurt, Lord, if it's my fault, I ask you to forgive me now. But, God, if feelings are hurt or someone's mad out of greed, I ask you to touch their heart. Because only you can deal with a greedy heart. Lord, we love you today. Lord, you've blessed us. You've saved our souls. So giving is just a small thing for what you've done for us. And Lord, for what you've done for us, we want to see it done for others. And that is done by giving and allowing people to go out and minister your Allowing us to have church, allowing us to send to missionaries, to ministries, to help others. The good news. So, Lord, thank you today for your blessings. But, Lord, most of all, sitting here in this building out of the elements on a comfortable chair, some wonderful people up here singing with wonderful PA equipment. All these things that were provided by your people giving. And we would be amiss today as we sit here in our comfort to let one person leave this room that don't know you as Lord and Savior. The reason we're sitting in this room today, Lord, is so that maybe someone would be sitting here that needs to know you. That's putting your money to work. So, Lord, today, if there be one in this room that don't know you or that is far from you, today, God, I pray that you would deal with their hearts and allow them today, God, to come back to you. Wow, what an amazing service we just had. You know, if the Lord spoke to your heart at any point during that message, and you would like to ask him to come into your life, I'd like to take the time to do that. The Bible tells us in uh, Romans that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that you can be saved. And if you'd like to do that today, I'd be honored to pray this prayer with you. So if you would, pray this prayer with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you today to come into my life. Forgive me of my sins and be my Lord and Savior from this day on, in Jesus' name, amen. That is the greatest prayer you can ever pray. And if you prayed that today, we would love to hear from you. You could message right here on this page and we would uh, put your name on our prayer list and continue to pray for you in the days to come. Again, thank you so much for joining us here at Forward Church.